Hello Elko High School teachers. I'm going to show you in this video tutorial how to create seating charts using the template that has been created for you. So the first thing you're going to have to do is navigate to the template. You can either do this through your Google Drive file stream or the web browser if that's how you access your Google Drive. Find your Google Drive, click on shared drives. You should have in this list, and yours will be different than mine, um, a folder called substitute lesson plans and then this brings up the shared drive folder where you are supposed to park your lesson plans for substitutes for hybrid learning navigate down to your folder for this tutorial I've created a fictional one that we will use once you double click on your folder and open it you will see a Google Slides um, document in there uh, with your last name and then seating chart this is your template, so go ahead and double click on that to open it. What this gives you then is the very basic start of how to create, or the template you'll need to create these lesson plans. So you have um, basic instructions on the first page, you have a shape bank. If you need it on the second page, you can select any one of these shapes copy and then paste them onto another slide if you want to uh, create your own template, which I will show how to do eventually. There is a generic template that you can just start with. If you happen to have a classroom that just has desks and traditional rows, then this may be easiest for you to use. And then there is a blank page if you have a less traditional classroom setup and you need to create your own template. So I will show you how to both use this template the basic traditional one to create the seating charts you need to create and after that I will show you how to create your own template if you have some other form of um, setup that the, the already created template doesn't work for. So if you are going to use this stay tuned right now. If you're going to need to know how to create your own then fast forward to that part of the presentation and pick up there. <clears throat> okay, so if you're going to use this template, you can move these desks around however you need to um, set up your actual classroom. Right now it is set up with 30 desks. You can delete them if you need. Um, just select one, press delete, and it'll go away. I'm going to undo that. Um, you can move this teacher desk however you need. So for example, maybe your teacher desk is in the corner or over here, or maybe it's at an angle. You can grab onto this little circle and then rotate it however you need to basically demonstrate where your teacher desk is. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to um, orient the reader or the, the observer here to where is the quote unquote front of your room or give, give that person a space to know um, which way your room is set up so that they can accurately determine who sits where in your classroom. If you need to move this door, say maybe your door is at the back of the room, you can select it and move it. Maybe your door is actually over here and you need to rotate it and then move it to this side of the room. Again, it doesn't have to be to scale or exactly accurate. The teacher desk and the do door just serve as places that will orient the, the, the reader of this document so they know which side of the room to start on to determine who sits where. Up here, this is a text box then that you will put in each, your, your last name and then each cohort and hour. You need to create a chart for each cohort an hour. So if you teach six classes, that means you will need in say hour one, cohort A, hour um, one, cohort B, and an hour one, cohort C seating chart. So if you teach six classes, you're gonna have 18 seating charts on this document. If you teach seven, you're gonna have 21. So the easiest way to, to do that without having to um, delete names out of charts is to first create all of the templates you need. So select the slide on the left hand side so it has a little yellow box over it like this. Right click on that slide and then select duplicate. And then it just makes an exact copy. So you can do that however many times you need, 18, 21, whatever it is that accommodates however many classes and cohorts you have. 
Okay, so after you've got that done, then you can go back and start with your first slide. Select that text box again. You can take out this part, just select it, and then type in your last name, what hour this is going to be. So I'm gonna say this is first hour, and then I'm gonna say this is gonna be cohort A. From there, all I have to do now is put the students where they go. So each one of these um, seats is a text box already ready for you. So all you have to do is double click on one, and it has to be a double click. If you just single click, it'll select the text box. You won't be able to type in it, but you'll be able to move it. So what you have to do is actually double click it, and you'll see the little cursor show up, and now it's ready to be typed in. So you just now have to put the student names where they go. So for example, <clears throat> going to put a student there. I'm going to double click on this one. I'm going to double click on this one. Remember these guys should be spaced six feet apart, but you've set that up however you have in your classroom. Now, you notice here, this particular student has a very long name. There's a few ways you can solve that. You can leave it as is, and you know we can figure out that that says SpongeBob SquarePants. Or you can, this text box, just increase its size a little bit so that it gives it enough room to bring all those onto um, one line there. It'll make that particular desk look like it's a little bigger but that should be fine because really all you're about is where, what desk does this student sit at when they're in your classroom on first hour on Monday because this, this person's a, a, a cohort. Okay, so continue on. Get all of your names in there. Okay, so skipped ahead there and now I have all 15 of my first hour cohort A students put into my seating chart. Now it's not likely you're gonna have 15 on um, very many if any of your cohorts, but if you do, then that's how you would fit the 15 into there. Of course, use that template any way you need to to arrange those desks so they fit what your classroom looks like and just make sure each student is in the desk that they are assigned to so that should our school nurse need to do contract tracing, they have an accurate, correct, easy to understand uh, seating chart ready to go. And that's it if you are using the um, blank template for the, the already standard template that I created there for your classrooms. Okay, if you have fast forwarded to this spot, it's because the traditional grid template that we started with this one doesn't work for your classroom and you need to be able to create your own template that is specific to your classroom. I will show you how to do that next. So first, if you don't need this grid, you can either leave it there and ignore it or you can delete it. I'm just going to ignore it for now. This is your shape bank and is probably what you can pull your shapes from if you are Google savvy enough to be able to create your own um, template with your own shapes that works better for you then feel free but if you want just to use these basic shapes and get them arranged um, how it works for your classroom on the Google Slides then I will show you how to do that. So usually the easiest ones to start with would be to place your classroom door and your teacher desk in the um, classroom because those will orient the viewer to the general layout. So I'm going to click on the image I need. In this case, I'm going to start with the door. I'm going to go copy that. Then I'm going to choose my blank template, template, my blank page here, and I'm going to paste it. And it'll just put it on that template somewhere. Now you can move it wherever you need. So I might say that my door is over here, and I'm gonna actually face it this way, wherever that works for you. Okay, I come back here, and I'm going to do the same thing for the teacher desk. So I'm gonna select that. If you wanna use a shortcut instead of using the drop down menus, then that's Control C for copy. Select my blank template, Control V for paste. And then I can put my teacher desk wherever I need, and orient it 
however is appropriate for your classroom. Now, most likely, um, you probably have, if you couldn't use the original grid and just, you know, move those desks around in some way or another to make it work for your classroom, it's probably because you have tables. So I'm going to show you the easiest way to create a template table for your classroom. Um, this will work best, especially if you have you know, the same table just, you know, six times or whatever you have. So I'm going to click on the student table. I'm going to control C for copy, control V to paste. And I'm just going to place that table somewhere in my classroom where a table sits. Um, this may not fit the exact shape of your table, so maybe your table is actually a little longer to make this work quite right. Maybe it's a little skinnier. Go ahead and you can size that however you want, or you can just leave it that basic shape. Now this is a single text box, which means if you start typing in it, it's going to be hard to put names in it like multiple names, you've got say two st students sitting catty corner or something at, at this table, that's going to be a little hard to make work with just typing into a text box. So the solution for that then would be to go back to the shape bank and use this student name text box. So click on that, control copy, go back to the template you're creating, control, just click anywhere, control paste, and it's going to bring this text box name up and let's say I might have a student sitting here I'm gonna get another text box by hitting control paste again and I might have a student sitting here and on a different hour I might have a student sitting here and a student sitting here. So there's four options for this particular table for these students to sit at. You just can arrange these text box however you need to make that make sense. Now you don't have to necessarily, when you're moving these shapes around, you don't always have to drag them with your mouse. You can also select one and then use the arrows on your um, keyboard to move them as you need. So once you have a table set up, how your tables look. So let's say I have six tables in my classroom and the students would sit in this orientation in these tables. Now I can actually, rather than recreating that every single time, which you can do, but what's easier then is to take this whole table template and copy that at once to create six of these. So in order to do that, I need to select all of these shapes at the same time. So I'm going to start with the table. It's highlighted in blue. I'm going to hold down the control key. So I'm pressing the control key and holding it down. I'm going to select all the other shapes I need. So there's that text box, that one, that one, and that one. Now I can let go of the control key and I have just the shapes that I want selected to copy selected at the same time. Now I can hit again control C that just copied that as a whole and then I can hit control, I can click over here now and un unselect that and I can hit control paste and it will copy in all of those all at once. So it has laid down the um, all these shapes together. Now as long as I keep these as selected together, they will also move together. So now I can move this table. Let's say I have one here. I need another one, so I hit control paste again. And I can move these here. And I can continue to do this until I have the, t the room set up, how it actually looks in my classroom. Now, I'm still trying to move these around and what I have realized is I put them all down, they're not quite laid out right, but now I have the problem that let's say I need to move this one, if I select just the text box of the table, it's going to move that without actually keeping the um, students text box names with it. That's a problem. So I'm going to undo that to move it as a whole again, I just need to reselect everything. So the table is currently selected. I'm going to hold control again and select the text box names I want to move with it. Let go of control. Now I can move it as a group. So I'm going to continue to do this until I get my classroom set up how it actually looks. So now I have created my classroom template using tables. So you can use a combination of tables and desks or whatever you need, but create the basic layout for your classroom. 
Now, before you actually start putting students into there, once you have your template created, the easiest thing to do will to create as many copies of that template as you need for all of your classes. So for example, if you have six classes, three cohorts each, you will need 18 of these to fill in. Seven classes, 21. So the best way to do that is to make sure to select it on the left-hand side, that little yellow box over it, right-click on it, and then select duplicate slide. And it will just duplicate this as many times as you need. Where did it just go? There it is. <laughs> Until you have the number you need for your classroom. And if you want to just have a blank one so you don't have to recreate the wheel again, then if you have 18 seating charts you need to make, make 19 of these and then just leave one blank and then you can just use that as your, your future template if you never need to start from scratch. Okay, so once you have that done, then it's just a matter of filling them in. So go back to the top of your first template there, and then replace this information in this text box with the information appropriate to the seating chart you're creating. So your last name, first hour, cohort A. So if Mr. Langer needs to do contact tracing, he can go to this slide and know that first hour, cohort A will have this seating chart. From there, you just need to place your students. So let's say I can fit two students kitty corner to each other and still maintain social distancing. I'm just gonna go to the little red text boxes. I'm gonna double click on them. You have to double click to make sure you can bring up the actual uh, text function. Double click in there until I can see the cursor and then I can start manipulating this. So I will then start putting in the names. I'm not going to have anyone sitting here, so just for clarity purposes, I'm going to take that name out. Again here, I'm not going to have anyone sitting here, for, so for clarity purposes, even if there's a chair there, I'm going to take that one out. And then I will have someone sitting here. And I will do that for all of my tables until I have all of my students for that hour seated. Okay, once I have my first hour cohort A seated everywhere they need to be, then I am done with that one. And the good news is, is that because as you're working in a Google document, it will auto save as you go. So that's done and ready. And I can move on to my next slide, which starts me over again with a new template. And I can start with our first hour again and cohort B and make my next template so on and so forth until they're all done just make sure to keep them up to date and if you need to make any changes um, work with Mr. Langer on what those changes are so that uh, he can do accurate contact tracing uh, for example if you need to move someone on a given day so if you were and you change the seating chart say I move let's say I'm gonna be back here again let's say I have to move Brainy Smurf, Smurf and Eric Cartman because Eric and Stewie are just too much trouble that far back in the room. So I have to move them, that's fine. I can change their names out, but what I need to do is document that carefully so that if Mr. Langer pulls this up on a Wednesday and let's say now I have Brainy Smurf here and Eric Cartman here, but he needs a contact trace to the previous Wednesday for whatever reason, um, he needs to know that Eric and Brainy were in different seats that previous week. So make sure you keep very careful track of that if you have to make changes. Best case scenario, you just don't make changes. The students sit where they sit and we just leave it that way. But we all know things happen. So if you have to move them around, just make sure you keep close, close track of how and when you make those moves and let Mr. Langer know. Um, so if he starts contact tracing, then his records are accurate. If you have any questions or you need help, if you get frustrated, the shapes aren't working right, you can't get the template created that you want, then please just contact me, Kristen Burzell. My extension is 1266. Or you can contact um, Jake Bogdan. Our extensions are up here. His is 1264. Either one of us can um, walk you through how to create any either kind of template or just what you need for your classroom, no problem. Good luck, here we go with hybrid. I hope you have a happy holidays between now and then.